sleeping in <laughs> come on let's praise Jesus Amen. pastor Eve you got something to say yeah <laughs> surprisingly she has something to say no I'm just kidding <laughs> pastor Eve Bassett it's her birthday today uh, yeah they, they uh, named a whole day after me New Year's Eve that's true right so it's good you're very important I'm very important yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you uh, after you get a certain age, birthdays just kind of fly by. You know what I mean? Thank you, Jesus. As long as we're well, as long as we're praising God. Amen, Amen, Amen John. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How are you all today? I'm fired up. Fired up's good. Fired up's good. We gotta. We'll have that t talk about it later. But this is Happy New Year. So it's kind of, kind of exciting to walk into all of this. You guys worked hard getting this done. So we'll be having an exciting thing tonight happening. Avery's back from school, Woo! so we're glad to see her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm kind of like um, not quite sure what's going on in the spirit right now. So, so let's just really enter in. Let, let's re just, you know, I, we want to go out like we want to go in. We want to go out this year like we want to go into the new year, yeah. right? We want to leave some stuff behind, yeah. right? We don't want to carry stuff in that we don't have to carry in. Yeah. Uh, it's not good that, that God gives us restarts, you know, like a new year. So he can get excited, you know, a new year, a new time. And that uh, it, it's like communion. It's always a reset. It's a reset. It's thinking how, we, how we're doing, that kind of thing. And, and I'm just very blessed uh, to have this house. Yeah. I'm so blessed to be a pastor of this house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, go in, I go out rejoicing in that, mm -hmm. and I go in rejoicing in that. Mm -hmm. And there's things that we get to rejoice about, right? There's things that we can be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we just thank you. This is the day you've made, yeah. and we will rejoice yeah. in it. We will rejoice in it. Do you know, even the time of sorrow, God is with us. Amen. We're just never alone when we have him. Mm -mm. Even in the time of sorrow, he is with us. You know why? It said that he carried sorrow. Mm -hmm. He carried grief. That it would not kill us. Mm -hmm. Really, that's what that's about. That there's a missing and there's a grief, but it will not kill us. It will not get us off track. We're so thankful for that. We're so thankful for that. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who's watching today, but I feel like there's a, you know, a great sorrow. I know some of us have lost people, but it's a, a great sorrow 
someone's heart today. And the Lord wants you to know that he comes to the place of sorrow to comfort and to give strength to you, to give strength to you. And when the future now looks bleak, he comes to give you a future. He comes to give you a future. He comes to open up other doors. He comes to open up other doors. Mm -hmm. So grief that paralyzes is removed today yes. through the name of Jesus. Grief that paralyzes is removed in Jesus' name. And that God, the God of all comfort, Amen. comes. <laughs> Aren't we glad we serve the God of all comfort? He comes to comfort. He comes to God Almighty, the supreme being, comes to comfort. We're so thankful for the God we serve today. We're so thankful. Hallelujah. Can we pray for Irene? Did she make it this morning? Um, yeah, she's been in a hospital. She's at home now. Uh, but, you know, she's realizing she probably should be in somewhere that... Uh, care, care facility of some form. What, she's 91? 90, 94, 95? Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> is that pretty good or is that pretty good? So, but anyone who's tried to get care facilities know how complicated and all those things can be. So can we pray for Irene today? This daughter of the Lord, that he's the God who prepares ahead of time. And we thank you, Father, for that perfect spot for Irene, that she will be blessed and be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for opening up doors. Thank you for the angels that go ahead of her. We thank you, Father, that the reign of peace is her portion in Jesus' name. And all those, Father, who are fighting sickness and all of those things, we thank you that you are the healer. We thank you you've given us authority on the earth even to pray and to proclaim that sickness and disease and afflictions have to be removed in Jesus' name. Thank you, for, thank you for today. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So I throw up my hands, praise you again.
worship you, sovereign God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You are worthy. 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 You are worthy to receive all glory and power and majesty. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy indeed. You are worthy to receive all praise and thanksgiving. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy. Praise God. I tell you, we are blessed. We are blessed here. Thank you, Father. So, on January 17th, which is a Wednesday, we're going to start an eight week course called Tactics. A couple of weeks ago, I had um, just a short thing of the fellow who's teaching it. Uh, it's been a book that's been around for a while, but he's teaching it now. It's kind of upgraded. And um, it puts you in the driver's seat, learning how to share with people. So it's amazing, it's amazing how quickly 
we can become like we have to defend what we believe. But we don't think about the fact that what people are saying to you, they have to also defend what they believe. And lots of things that people just say, they have no facts. They have no, uh, they, ha they, they don't have, they, they go blank on you. And so, so why, why do you, why, so why, why do you think that? Where do, and it's not, it's not confrontational in the way that you're arguing, but it is um, asking people why they believe what they believe. And you're not in a rush. You're not feeling bad. You're not trying to get them to say, you know, the first sentence. And it's just wisdom. And all of the you know, amazing um, uh, four words from people, top, top people saying every Christian, every Christian should be learning this. It's not... And it's very, uh, well, Jerry, you, you watched him. Why don't you come up and tell us what you think? On the spot is good here. Because <laughs> Jerry's good at this, so. No pressure, Jerry. <laughs> what was the name of that thing again? <laughs> um, it um, really brings out some, like uh, Pastor Eve was saying, some non-confrontational ways of presenting things and, um, and by diffusing, and, and rather than you having to, to defend God, uh, it, it turns things around so that they have to defend what they do or don't believe. And uh, I've been, I watched the series, so I've been practicing on this guy that I meet with from time to time. And, uh, and it's really working. I felt like I, I'm putting a stone in his shoe, right? And, uh, and now he's thinking about uh, what he believes. And, you know, you, you, when you start asking questions like, well, how did you come to that conclusion? Or why do you believe what you believe? And what kind of evidence have you given credence to? And those kinds of things. So it, um, it really diffuses the uh and takes away the you know i'm i'm better than you i'm a christian and you're a sinner you know it doesn't come across like that at all it's it's more like you know i'm really interested in you as a person and and you have some great ideas how did you come to that and uh and so i think it's uh like pastor Eve was saying it's uh, it's going to be beneficial for for all of us i can't wait actually to go through it again so that's, uh, and it's about an hour long. It's not a long night. So, 17th, with tactics. And you can order the book if you want. Uh, what he speaks is pretty well what, what is the book. But you can get this uh, book. And there's a workbook also, but I don't think we, we need it. So we're going to go. So anyway, hey, eight hours that can change someone's life. What else have we done with eight hours, right? Eight hours that can change someone's life. Mm -hmm. That you just make a commitment. Uh, now, not on the 17th when you have something else you need to do, right? <laughs> but now, make a commitment in your heart. I'm going, you know, I'm going to learn from this. And, and it's, not, um, it's not judgy. It's not any of those things. It's actually you really care about the person you're talking to. And uh, sometimes... You can learn a lot from people just asking them questions, and it's, it's amazing how people have certain, certain answers uh, that they have heard somewhere or they've grown up with that they have absolutely no facts to, buy, to back it up, absolutely nothing, and how it can get people to start to think. Uh, I remember a young, young guy during the Jesus people, and we, they used to sent us into the universities. We w would go into the universities and give our testimonies because we were, they called us Jesus freaks because we were so unusual. And uh, <laughs> so I remember going into one classroom. It was a pile of young adults there. And, and, uh, and I, I, you know how God pins someone, right? And I kept noticing this young guy right away in the back of the corner. And so just kept pinning him. 
And so he said, we asked for questions at the end, or questions, he said, so why is there evil in the world? And don't give me that original sin stuff. So obviously, someone who knew scripture had learned something. Original sin, right? Brought evil into the world. So don't give me that uh, original sin stuff. I said, well, what if that's the right answer? And he just went blank. He, he just went blank. He could not speak past that. Uh, because you know what? We do have right answers. But to him, you, I, I had to justify what I believed when I just said no. <laughs> what if that's the right answer? So I wasn't going to go in with his different things, right? And he came up to me after and said, you know, you guys did good. <laughs> <laughs> but he says something I never forgot. He says, but you walked in like we were your enemies. I says, thank you, I'm going to remember that. Because you go in like you're going in for a fight, right? When you go in, you're going in with life, right? So anyway, I, I trust that young man is serving God today. Of course, he'd be an old man serving God today. So I, I just uh, put that aside. The 17th, we'll give you some more information in next Sunday about stuff, but Hallelujah. I would like to have some prayer time around that. I'm just trying to work some schedules here. Thank you, Father. It says, the desire of the slothful kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. Proverbs 21, 25. Do you know that God made us to work, right? Uh, <laughs> I thought this was so good. I, this, was, this was an ouch. Because you ha are you one of those alarm people that, you know, for about 10 minutes and 20 minutes? As the door turneth upon his hinges, so does the slothful man upon his bed. <laughs> I went, oh, okay. I just have to think about that one. Hebrews 6, 12 says that you be not slothful but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. So a part of being slothful, I guess, is not using your faith. Not, you know, being slothful. How about being slothful for the promises of God? How about, how about being slothful for what he wants for you? I mean, it's, uh, through faith and patience inherit. So we know we have, we're, we, we know we have an inheritance, but sometimes we're not seeing it with our eyes. It says, listen, through faith and patience. Faith is like a muscle. You have to work it. When I was a young adult, and I, I read a book by, I don't know if his first name was White or his last name was White. Just a small book. You know, what they used to have it back in the 70s. And, and uh, I never forgot he was, he was a man who could see. He had visions he could see. And he, was, he said he was talking to Jesus. Jesus was in front of him. He was talking to Jesus. And there was this empty spirit between them, <laughs> making all this noise and distraction. And he's, he's trying to hear Jesus, and this thing is... And he's, and he's thinking, why isn't Jesus getting rid of this thing? And finally, he says to Jesus, why aren't you getting rid of this thing? And Jesus said, because I give you the authority to do it. There is things running around us that are demons. And we take it as part of our personalities part of our circumstances, oh, this is just happening to me. When we're praying, asking Jesus to help us, when Jesus gives us the authority to get rid of it. And that's not arrogance at all. My goodness, your dependency is totally on him. And just as interesting, um, 
that Jesus, when he did stuff, he didn't, he didn't pray, he just spoke it. Right? He spoke it. And it says he's given us that authority to speak it. And if we're not speaking it, it's not getting done. And we can pray, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. And he's saying, I give you the authority. Speak it. Speak what the word says. We can be really weird about stuff and pray weird things, but we need to pray like Jesus prayed. And he spoke it. It says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. What you speak has great authority. What you speak sends angels uh, on patrol. What you speak brings a living life around us. What you speak, even today in this city, as his people worship God, things happen in the spirit in this city. Angels are dispatched in the city. Because we're doing something. Not because God did something. We're doing something through God that got something done. And you could be the most wonderful Christian and just be kicked around by the devil because you don't speak it. You speak into your home. You speak into your body. I've been doing that this week. You speak into your body. You speak into watching something, news or something. Man, you, you speak life. You speak life. Because it can make you mad, it can make you fearful, it can make you oppressed. You are the ones who speak life. Speak life. How do you do, how do, you do that? By his stripes, I'm healed. So therefore, I'm healed. It's, I'm healed. Why? He's already said it, therefore I can claim it. I'm healed. Therefore, what comes out of my mouth, I may be coughing and snorting, but I'm healed. Because the, the facts may be I'm coughing, but the truth is I'm healed. And therefore, in victory, I speak to truth. I believe truth and not just circumstances. That just means the, doesn't mean the circumstances aren't there, but we have a higher place that breaks the power of the circumstances. Listen, going into tomorrow, going into 2024, use your voice. Speak what the word has spoken. Don't beg God ever for things he's already done. What's the order? As it is in heaven. So let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He says that we get to bind and loose what's in heaven. We bind and loose what's on earth. What's permissible in heaven is permissible in earth. What has authority in heaven has authority on the earth. We're bringing the kingdom with our speaking, with our proclaiming, with our obedience. Loving and not hating. Having revelation power to break the powers of the enemy. <laughs> Praise God. We are called. We are called. We are the, he is the light of the world and we are his candles. We are his, you know, we have light. No matter the darkness around us, we have light. We have light. Thank you, Father. That's why he said, Listen, I've given you talents. I was going to read that scripture. Most of you know the scripture. You, get, uh, you give certain talents, you know, three, two, one. I think the other one's five and three and one or whatever. Talents that he's given you. He's given you talents, whoever you are. That doesn't mean a talent to play guitar. It means something he's put in you, something that he's gifted you with. Something that he can use you with. Something that you can serve with. He's given you talents. And then that one guy hides the talent. And he, and he felt pretty good about it. 
listen, you can sit on your couch. You can be on your laptop. You can be on your phone. And you're hiding your talent because you're not doing anything with it. You say, well, I don't know what my talent is. You spend, you spend some time with Jesus. You get peace with him. And he opens up that door. He opens up that door. Suddenly you're in it. You know, at, at 21, I would never, ever, 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 when I came back to Jesus, I would never, ever, ever think I would be a minister. Ever. I had every disqualification you can, you can think of. Plus, I was a woman. Ooh. And yet, just in obedience, just in doing what he told me to do the same day, and not that I was perfect, I sure wasn't, but I found myself on a path. And I looked back and thought, how did I get on this? Is anyone else any different? No. Obedience leads you to your path. Obedience is not always a hard thing. It's just hearing his voice and going that direction. Obedience isn't something he's trying to get out of you. It's something he's trying to show you. The other side of obedience, blessing is waiting for you and others on that other side. So going into 2024, listen. <laughs> Do not be this little Christian. Be this Christian that knows who they're about, who cares for people, who's able to speak, who's able to stand up against unrighteousness, is able to give love no matter what's going on, is able to have a voice in the middle of whatever God's put you. That's who you are. You're a daughter and a son of the king. That's who you are going into 2024. Hallelujah. See what he's doing and jump in. That's who we are. We are partners with God. So today, let's settle our hearts there. Let's settle our hearts. You know, they say, they say uh, you know, when you, when you hear something, if you don't settle it, if you don't think about it, if even if you don't write it down, you lose it within a few hours. Yeah. Really. So today, I know the Holy Spirit's doing stuff in our heart. <coughs> don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't be complacent. Don't lose it. Because God has something great for you in 2024. God bless you guys. Love you all to pieces and back. Yeah. Love you. It's a great thing to go shop for kids, you know. I mean, really. Um, but it's not a hardship. No. Like, that, that wasn't a hardship. You know, it was, you know, I just go to Amazon. I do good, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not much of a shopper. <laughs> but I know what I want, and it's not there. I'll find it somewhere else. But not much of a hardship, but just doing something brings a blessing Amen. you know <coughs> the scripture says in corinthians that your giving brings thanksgiving to god mm -hmm. I, I get excited that scripture i I'm, I'm, i don't know how many times i quote it but it, it actually brings thanksgiving to god yeah. our generosity our giving brings thanksgiving to god and you know we're going out better financially this year than last year so we thank the Lord for that Amen. and uh, that he continues in his blessings, of, you know. And Al Alan Terry in Thailand, you know, their outreach, they have do a lot of outreach at Christmas time. They say, they say, it says they start caroling at 6, uh, 6 a.m. and stop at 6 p.m. or something. Oh. Yeah, Al said it's for the young. <laughs> <laughs> He does all that other stuff. <laughs> but just the, the people that get born again and saved, that's just one little thing they do. You know, he, and he was talking about uh, highlighting John Albert in Mirma. 
And uh, John was here a, years, a number of years ago. Do you remember him? Mm-hmm. And just a courageous, courageous man. And he adopted 50 children. Wow. 50 children. Wow. A number of years ago. Now some of those kids are in Bible school in Thailand. And, uh, you know, he was able to, and he brought, I think it was four to the Philippines when they had their gathering to get ordained out of those 50 kids. Wow. You know, the, how, what's, what God does, what God does. And, I mean, he's been in the middle of war. He's been in the middle of <laughs> great persecution. And here's that guy. There's that guy. Didn't quit. Saw 50 kids. You know, I'm sure they weren't all 50 at one time, <laughs> but ended up 50, right? And uh, just, you know, God's got his heroes that you don't hear much about. And, uh, and then had a great report, and we'll have the newsletter um, next week. I don't know what happened to the newsletter. Anyway, another story. So that outreach, if you could see, well, you will, if you could see these couple of hundred children, you know, that came and they give them, they give them the juice and the bun and stuff, and then they had packages. And somehow the, somehow the government, this is Rwanda, by the way, sometimes, somehow the government decided that they had to do something for 200 single mothers who were mothers because of abuse. If you can imagine that. And so they, they came up to the plate and helped these 200 moms. So we got wow. pictures of that, you know. And, uh, oh, you got it there. How did you get that? Magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> here are the mums. Here are the mums right here. Some of them, right? And you can see the pack. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Awesome. Oh, they sent it to you. That's why I didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is a newsletter. We'll print it out for you for next week. Just keep going down. Uh, what do we got? No, no, just back up. It. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, go, go there, the next one down. So this is the kindergarten. And the, uh, I, I think, anyway, it's exciting because, you know, we've had a building, then another building working towards getting to school because it's extreme poverty here. Mm-hmm. And um, so... John says, well, you've got to start somewhere. He, fu- he got fed up with all the rules and regulations. Anyway, and so they started kindergarten. And, and you know, the, in Asian s- schools, they always have uniforms, right? They have the same colors and stuff. How they keep them that clean is always amazing to me. <laughs> you know, but anyway, this bright yellow, little, little kids, you can keep going, bright yellow, and they're getting their first certificate, you know. And now the, the uh, Rwandan government is going to work with John to get other classes in now in the school. So that's a real, that's a real amazing breakthrough yeah. in Rwanda. Because yeah, we know we got the well this year. Yeah. I mean, clean water for the first time. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. Yeah, mm. just keep going. I have no idea what he's doing there. OK, there's John <laughs> in the middle, and this wife, right, Christine, beside him. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, and here's all the pictures of different things that were going on. Uh, just great. Yeah, keep going. And there's the family. There's the family. It's awesome. And they also got material, gave a gift of material to these 200 mums so that they could sew uh, clothes for them and their, their child or children. So praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Your, your giving brought thanksgiving to God. Thank Lord. Sorry, guys, you're missing the whole thing. You can see the newsletter. Right? <laughs> so very, very thankful for John and Christine. And their kids were right in the middle of all of that. And uh, of course, Al and Terry, who went, they were our first missionaries. Yeah. Our first missions that we uh, gave monthly to. And that was, <laughs> I don't know, 35, 40 years ago. Nope, 45. 45. Oh, I'm not that old, honey. It can't be 45 years. <laughs> so 45 years. And isn't it wonderful, uh, the staying power? of this couple. And now, you know, their, their daughter and son-in-law really are, 
you know, taken over most of the responsibilities and they're doing now apostolic, more apostolic stuff. And it's just beautiful watching the generations uh, of missions, yeah. the generations. And, uh, and same with uh, Christine and John's children. Like they have a vision for, yeah, they have a vision. The, the boys have a vision to make money. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, and uh, the daughter's going to get water to every kid in Rwanda. So, you know, they're both, they're all brilliant. They're all brilliant students, right? And, uh, but their money isn't for them. Their money is, this is how you should do it. You should prosper. You should prosper and able to help people, yeah. right? Amen. So I'm glad they don't have this poverty mentality yeah. that's in the, in particular, uh, some Christian churches. Thank you, Jesus. So in, in the thinking of giving um, Isaiah 48, 17, if you can put that up. I'm so thankful for the ladies that look after all this stuff, I'm telling you. Because, you know, some pastors, some pastors and teachers, especially teachers, they have all the scriptures ready and give it to them. <laughs> they have never had that with me. <laughs> I actually do have the scriptures, but half the time I don't go to half of them, and uh, I'm going somewhere else. So, they, so for them guys to, they follow me. They're just anointed because their pastor's a problem. They're anointed. <laughs> so thus says the Lord, the Redeemer. The Redeemer means bought back. He's come. He bought back that which has been uh, sold in slavery, and he bought back. So thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. That means the uncommon one, yes. the uncommon God. I am the Lord. Just doesn't say I'm the Lord. He says I'm the Lord, your God. He's he's even admitting it. <laughs> I, I think sometimes I remember one 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 lady in was witnessing a business class I was in, business school, and and I witnessed everybody and. Uh, and this, I thought, i got to get to that woman. She's the most miserable one here. <laughs> I finally got an opportunity to talk to her, and she goes, oh, I am a Christian. Oh. <laughs> I said to her, please don't tell anyone. Because <laughs> everyone thought she was miserable, right? <laughs> anyway, we had a good conversation. <laughs> I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Who, do, who is the redeemer he's bought, he's paid for. He paid the price that you're able to hear him to be led. It's not a matter of checks in the mail, even though I don't mind that. It's not a matter of checks in the mail. It's a matter of hearing him. We're in these kind of times. You need to hear him. You need to hear him. If he tells you to diversitize, you do that. If he tells you to do this, you do that. If he gives you a talk, just because what you're doing now doesn't mean you have to do it forever. Amen. He could have something new and exciting for you. You don't have to do it forever. There are other things that he could be using not only to profit you, but to profit others. Hallelujah. The Lord that teaches you to profit. That's who we're thankful for today. Yes. Let's depend on that. Just depend on that. What's the point of the scripture if you don't depend on it? Amen. What's the point of the scripture if you don't say yes and amen to that? Amen. Start to depend on like, God, you're the one who teaches me. Amen. I don't care your position. I don't care if you got, you know, you got restricted finances. That, that's got, it doesn't say all of those who have restricted finances. Finances can't use this scripture. <laughs> All of those who don't have a high education can't use this scripture. All of those who came from poverty mentality and their families have always been poor, they can't use that scripture. Is that true? How about if you're a teenager? You can't use that scripture. You have to wait till you're older. How about prospering 
at 18? How about prospering at 16? How about prospering? How about God giving you ideas? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And you, you see the examples of kids that get hold of stuff and end up doing water wells all through Africa and stuff like that, you know, because they had a vision that went past their age. And we have the God who gives us ideas. Amen. Amen. God bless you in your giving today.